Hey guys, how's it going? So I've come across another video of KJ's and this one is about how she's talking about apparently, I think it's Robin stalking Janelle in, the, in an RV that she's lived in and Cody visits the RV. <laughs> it's something so stupid, but okay, here we go. Everyone, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back. It's Monday, October 24th. Who watched the Like a lot of people, the COVID-20 got a hold of me. I guess I ever hit all the reasons. In 2020, I joined Noom. latest episode of Sister Wives. If you didn't watch the latest episode of Sister Wives, you didn't really miss a whole lot. And some parts of this episode, you don't even need to know happened. Well, I mean, some parts I just, I thought, well, you know, if I'm going to do a recap video, I'm not going to really talk about that. And uh, one part you aren't going to hear me react to is uh, a, a conversation that Chris. Her intro is so creepy. It's not even funny. There's no way in hell she is that happy ever, ever, ever. I'm not even kidding. Like she's getting more bizarre and more crazy each video she makes. It's insane. I've never seen anything like this. <sighs> I mean, I'm very, uh, hmm. Thinking maybe there's more things involved. So Robin's a stalker. Oh my God. Here we go. had on camera with Truly uh, about her feelings about the divorce, which I just wasn't really fond of. I don't think a minor child needs to speak about that. And it, it really felt uncomfortable for me to watch. So I uh, definitely not going to address that in the, in the respect of like discussing the, the Truly's feelings, because honestly, I don't agree with it being put on the show at all. So what this video is going to be about is actually just going to be a couple of the cringy moments that I thought happened in this episode. And one in particular, when it comes to Robin and Janelle. So I've told you a million times on this channel that reality TV shows are not real. And <sighs> and I feel like I have to have this conversation with so many of you a lot because we get, we watch the show and we like see it in a lens and we're like, oh, that's real. This is totally real. Everything that we're seeing is real. Except when you drill it down, right? Every sh sh scene can be shot multiple times. Uh, times. Uh, wow. So she just basically called her audience stupid because she claims that she has to keep telling everybody over and over again and over that it's fake. Are you suggesting that your audience is dense, stupid, moronic? Like I would never even said that, but she's saying that because she doesn't want to have to keep addressing it, <laughs> which I highly doubt people are going around going, oh my God, is this real? Is that real? Wow. Uh, they can do retakes. If they miss a fight happening, they will reenact the fight, which I think some of these scenes are reenactments of arguments they may have had. Uh, and there's other aspects of producers building storylines or Cody and the wives building manufactured, exaggerated storylines of their lives for drama. Cody is not one to shy away from creating drama for the show. So this is why there's certain parts of this that felt very fake. And one of them had to do with Robin, but it was so cringy that I was like, okay, we're going to talk about this. And then in another episode today or another video today, we'll talk about the conversation that Cody and Christine have about custody and splitting of the assets, because that's a whole nother mess. So before we get into this, uh, Robin's cringy watching and monitoring of Janelle, uh, can you do me a favor? You guys, uh, so I have this goal of hitting 300,000 subscribers and I can't believe like we, I'm making amazing progress. So many of you are subscribing. So if you haven't yet, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and uh, at, on the way out, uh, it's free, costs you nothing, and then you can hit notifications so you know when I go live or if new content loads and give videos thumbs up and leave comments if you have anything to say. Again, I'm super excited to see so many of you subscribing. Thank you all so much. I have a feeling I might hit the, make this goal of 300,000 by 2023. So let's dive into
I figured out why she She's doing this. KJ can't stand the fact that Emily D. Baker has completely surpassed her and left her in the wind. Emily will be very successful. She is very successful. And I love that about her. Oh, sorry, Kitty. <clears throat> and I want to show you something too. She was only, she was at, so KJ was at, um, what the heck was it, 200,046 or something like that. And now all of a sudden it's jumped up to 60 some odd thousand. Yeah. Um, tell me you're not buying subs without telling me that. Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> Hold on, I'll show you. this part of the episode that I just want to talk about briefly. One of the huge factors of this whole narrative about Coyote Pass is, are they ever going to build? And there's a lot of discussion in the family about, you know, there's Mary believes there's other things going on in the family that need to be sorted out before they build. Uh, other people like Christine want nothing to do with the property and are not going to build. And then you have Janelle and Robin. Janelle is out on the property in an RV, allegedly believing that she's going to build a casita and that having this property out, uh, having the RV out on the property is somehow going to implore them to do work on the property. Okay. We've already been able to review that this is not true because she took out a permit. We already know that this, this storyline is a little bit fake because she took a permit out in 2021 for four months for summer. She only ever planned to have that RV out on the property for the summer months. And she never renewed it after that. And she took the trailer off and she doesn't live in the trailer anymore. And nothing was built on the property because she still owes money on the property. She can't build on the land until it's paid off. Before they could even build, there's a million things that this family has to do. And we'll get there in a second after we talk about this cringy part with Robin. So, so now suddenly there, Cody goes there to the property to have a, to level. KJ shouldn't even know this. This is well beyond getting into someone's personal business. It's disgusting. And she's got to be stopped. I mean, who the hell does she think she is? You can't just go in people's lives like this. I'm still in awe that the states allow someone like this fucking thing to go and look up court records and blast them everywhere and she gets away with it. That is illegal according to every site that she pays to get these documents. And yet she's still got a channel. No repercussions. No, not at all. Honestly, I do not believe for one second that 7M is going to settle like she seems to think. All her lies and bullshit surrounding that case has fucked her. And I'm really hoping that they choose to have her take her channel down. That's what Toddy did. That's why there's no more Katie Joy live. That garbage is gone now. She can't go on Twitter. She can't go on Instagram, she can't go on Facebook. She doesn't get paid anymore. So yeah, go on it, KJ. We know you won't because you don't get paid. And that's all it is for you is money. Good. I'm loving the fact that she's losing money. It looks good on her. Maybe it's time you get a job. KFC style. The, the RV. Making sure that the RV is parked level so that inside when they're inside, nothing's like this or like that. They want to make sure that, you know, flat surfaces are flat. And apparently they're struggling with the leveling process. And he and Gabriel have some arguments about it. He says that Gabriel knows nothing about it. Uh, he and, you know, Janelle are kind of arguing back and forth about it. He's being super dramatic. She wants to use planks. He's like annoyed. It's a thing, you know, and it's just very, it's just like watching a family argue about what they're going to do next kind of thing. Now, in the process of all that, Christine mentions that, the benefit of having Janelle um, near on the Coyote Pass is that it's super, super close to her and that Jel Janelle has stopped over in the morning for coffee. She'll have, she'll eat lunch or dinner with her sometimes. She comes over to do her laundry. She said that she sees Janelle all the time now that she's out on Coyote Pass. She's because amazing. Okay, so she's only a mile away from me now. She lives out on the property for coffee. She's come over for breakfast. She's been doing her laundry, okay? She's been doing her laundry in my house, which is of course great. Because Coyote Pass has no, absolutely no, let me repeat this. No. Add infrastructure. 
So Coyote Pass is just vacant land. And when I looked through the affidavit for purchase, when they purchased this property, it's actually privately owned land. So all the roads have to be uh, taken care of by the Brown family. It's gated. So once they get inside, all the roads inside of that property will have to be completely maintained by the Browns. Additionally, there are no wells. There are no septic tanks. There are, there's no electricity. There are no utilities actually running into the property. They have it up to where the gate is, but they're, if they want to put in any utilities, they will have to put it in. Not only that, the water is an issue. Is she stupid? It says right there that the electricity and the water and the phone are connected to this property. The, it says the property is served by, and it's got a water company, where the hell is it? It says it's got water, it's got electric, it's got a single, a single party telephone. So what the fuck is she talking about? Yeah, it says right there, the following services are currently provided to the property, water, electric, single party telephone. Holy fuck, she's an idiot. Wow. Because they don't know if there's actually, they didn't tap to see if there's actually water or an ability to bring a well in. So they might actually have to, what Cody was talking about, bring a tank of water in where they put the tank in and then they fill the water up in order to have water at their property. It's wild if you think about it. They went out and purchased a piece of property where you can't get a well and you'll have to bring a septic tank in, which and you'll have to have septic systems because there's no sewer. And then they have to maintain the property, like uh, like they have to maintain all of the, the streets and the roads because the city will not maintain them because it's on private property. So they basically bought raw property that literally is undeveloped and completely nothing's there. They have, in order for them to even be able to build, they have to bring in all of these utilities, which they have to pay for. They have to get the water, they have to get the septic. They are so far, and it's going to be super expensive. So you have to add that on top of build. It's insane. Not to mention the property. Uh, it's a known area that has prairie dog uh, poison. It's like plague, prairie dog plague. Because the prairie dogs have gotten sick in this area, uh, the soil will have to be moved and tested to make sure that it's safe for them to live on because it's the bubonic plague that these prairie dogs have. And it's been in the news for a long time. They knew that this was a factor when they bought the property and they still bought it. So the soil on top of everything and underneath, like the droppings from the prairie dogs, it's contaminated and they have to make sure that it's safe in order to live there. So they have so much to do that it makes you realize like why the hell would they have even bought this property knowing all of that ahead of time? Or could it have just been Cody knowing how Cody is just think it's not a big deal. Okay, so next let's talk about this weird thing about Robin. So they're not gonna build there because they have tons and tons of stuff to do. So so while Cody and, and Janelle are the plague, <laughs> she just said, "Miss Know It All," and they're not going to—they're not going to do this on the property, and they're not going to build on this property. You don't know that. You are not them. I hate the fucking insinuations. I hate the fact that she thinks she knows everything and she thinks she's right all the time because it's just not true. It's not factual. But you keep going with your plague nonsense. Are like fighting about what they're going to do with the leveling and they finally get it leveled in the midst of all of that they're not going to build on this property they're fighting over the property they're fighting over the leveling and then somehow robin enters and she says that every once in a while she goes to the property to sit on a and to just look at the property and dream i always go out to the property and i sit there on what was going to be my lot and imagine it's out there the time i would have was gone if i would have ran into her just said hi and talked to her but yeah it was weird and i thought this doesn't even make Makes sense. I don't even believe she's doing this. This is so weird to me. Like she just has this rickety bench that's literally sitting out in the middle of Coyote Pass on her property. And she's going to go sit there. Wow. So KJ is claiming that she's stalking her because she's sitting on a bench. You know, if I had dreams of going there, I would often probably do that too. Just imagine it, what it could be, what it will be. That's not fucking stalking, idiot. Holy fuck, like get your shit together already and start actually telling the fucking truth for once in your life. And stare at Janelle's trailer. It's 
it felt incredibly stalkerish. I was like, right, yeah, I don't believe this at all. So she's got this rickety old bench out there and then she's got Janelle, she's like throwing shade about, you know, how if Janelle can get this to happen, she would be great because she really wants to live out in the property. This is her dream to live out on this property. But suddenly we have insert rickety bench on the property and she's basically staring at Janelle's property. And then she has to remind people that Janelle is never there anytime she's out there. And I'm like, so is she trying to imply that Janelle's just saying that she's living there? in like theory or is she trying to imply that Janelle is, is she trying to compete with Christine because you know Christine's like oh yeah Janelle and I see each other all the time and then Jan and he's like well I go out there Robin's like I go out there and I look at the property and I sit there but Janelle's never there it's weird if she is able to somehow get something going on the property then yeah she'll be my favorite person forever because like that's all I want us to get on that property but if she was there I would say hi so we're supposed to like make it seem like it's Janelle's fault that they don't speak and this could be you know how Chris how Robin in the the tell all was saying how Janelle doesn't want to have a relationship. That is not what was happening in that episode at all. I can't, I still can't believe that people believe her bullshit. This has nothing to do with stalking. You're stalking, KJ. You're sick, honestly. This is disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. Relationship with her and she's tried to talk with her and she won't are we setting this up so that robin feels like janelle's avoiding her p.s why would she always be at the property if she's working if she's traveling if she's with her kids if she's out running errands she might not always be home are you always home i'm not always home it's just a whole level of freaky and i and i remember thinking like this just doesn't even make sense has she ever mentioned having this bench out on the property has she ever mentioned that she just goes out there and sits and more importantly isn't it weird that you're like sitting out on the bench and you have your camera crew with you that's weird to me. Like, why are you bringing your camera crew? That's weirder to me than Janelle not being home. It's weirder to me that you sit on a vacant property and you spy on Janelle. If this is true, my thought is, are you going out to the property to simply spy on Janelle to make sure she's doing what she says she's doing so you can report back to Cody so you can see what Cody's doing with Janelle? Do you get a feeling sometimes that Robin is so insecure about her relationship with Cody that she like would track him wherever he goes? Cause you know, last week it was like, Robin can't be away from him and the kids can't be away from him for two to three days. So did Robin put out that bench? Did she put this bench out on her property so she could go there and watch Cody while he's at Janelle's house? It makes no sense. And it just seems like it's a way for, for. You make no sense. This is fucking stalking what you're doing. This is making insinuations, making up bullshit lies just so you can keep your bullshit channel running, which is failing, by the way, considering you only got 16,000 views. Imagine that. Imagine that. Not like your 100,000 views, huh? Looks like people caught on to your fucking bullshit. But like you said, more importantly, I think you need to throw this shirt in the trash can unless you're back with Amy Duggar. Robin to feel like she's included or including herself. And it's again, she's always throwing shade at Janelle. She's always finding a way to underhand. A way to underhand, undermine Janelle. Last week it was insulting Janelle and uh, the girls making fun of Savannah's sleeping arrangements and insulting Janelle for living in a trail trailer, which by the way, I went and did some Google searches and found some houses that she lived in. And while she didn't live in a trailer per se, the houses that she was living in prior to being on the show were very poorly maintained homes. Uh, some of them look like they're completely condemned now when I searched on Google. So if she's gonna like try to play like no one should live in a trailer, maybe she should just like remember where she came from. That's just my thought. So you have, Robin faking the story. Story. Wow. How is she getting the addresses of where this woman used to live and then telling her that, you know, you should remember where you came from? Who the fuck do you think you are, lady? That is... I don't understand why the Duggars or the Browns haven't sued her ass yet either. I do not understand that. This is fucking scary, stalker, disgusting. It's bad, it's wrong, and it's got to stop. You don't do that to people. There has got to be some fucking law or you know what? Maybe the people in the United States, <laughs> maybe you need to sign not only a petition, but make your own damn law for so that people can't do this to you. If this happened in Canada, it wouldn't be happening for very long. She'd be behind bars.
You can't do this to people over here. I don't understand how everything's public record. It's gross. Like it's none of anybody's business where they lived, where they came from. Um, if they did, if they got a parking ticket or they got a fine, like it's no one's fucking business. And the fact that she digs into all this shit and makes it like it's uh, just this huge mountain when it's really just a little molehill is beyond me. Line that I don't like you just put this bench out there like how did the bench get out there and why would you just put this bench out there I don't believe it and a lot of you didn't believe it either a lot of you felt like it was super fake and some of you just flat out thought that it was stalkerish if this is actually a true storyline right now I feel like they're really low on storylines because the family is so fractured and I feel like they're trying to find anything to keep cause drama and create interest and listen it's causing us to have this conversation but the bottom line is they have way too much work to do on this property they have to pay it off first. And then once they pay it off, they have to spend all that money just to get it ready to build. And they have a ton of work to do just to get it to that point. Not to mention the contaminated soil, not to mention the fact that they owe a bunch of money on the property, not to mention they own property. Question, what the hell does it matter to KJ anyways, what they're doing, when they're doing it and about this fucking property? Like, are you jealous? Sitting there saying that they don't got a storyline. Have you seen your views lately? Because... They are not skyrocketing, as you'd like to make everyone think, thanks to your bot subs. You are actually going downhill very fast. Yeah, it's like a roller coaster. Hang on, bitch. Flagstaff and Robin has a $1.2 million home. Why do they need to build? They don't. So... Robin is stalking Janelle. Do you think that she actually has this rickety old bench out there and does this? Or do you think that she is lying and creating this for drama? And if she is doing this, don't you think it's creepy? Does this make you feel like it's even creepier that she spies on Janelle? Is she admitting, even if she, so say this is true, is she admitting that she's stalking Janelle? Because that's gross and super creepy. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys. Oh my God, this chick is delusional, like big time. Look at how excited she is that she gets away with lying and everybody believes her. Not everybody, just her little stupids. The hardcore fans. <laughs> oh, I can't wait till she's gone. Oh, anyways, um, thanks for joining me. It was only, what, how long is this? 23 minutes, okay. So it wasn't too, too long. Um, I'll be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow during the day, I'm assuming I'll make another one of these videos and I plan on doing some paranormal tomorrow. So I will see you guys tomorrow at some point. So have a good night and I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye.